Hey guys, good morning. So it's early in the morning. The sun's just coming up over there. We got a actually a mud slab to do today. So we got this big long foundation. Uh, we just got to get this covered. It's a crawl space, so not really going to be anything down here. We just got to cover up the rock. Get some concrete down there. We're going to put a vapor barrier down. So we'll be pouring concrete here soon. Well, trucks just showed up. It's about an hour late, but we're getting going to get the conveyor spread out. And hopefully by the time we back him up for that right there, he's going to be able to reach that back there. We won't have to pull it too much. So just getting going. We'll get this show on the road. Hey guys, Mike here. Yeah, so this one is a little different than the normal flat and level concrete floors we pour. You know, we'll do a handful of these what we call mud slabs or rat slabs every year where when they dig the foundation they just run into some ledge and either the homeowner doesn't want to pay to have the ledge blasted out to get a full foundation or they're basically just happy with having a crawl space you know and building right off the foundation the way it is like this so what i said earlier was was we were just basically you know sealing off the sub base and helping prevent any moisture from coming up through so these people will have a nice dry home. There's, there's probably about a five foot difference in elevation from one end of this to the other. This thing was close to 80 feet long. It, it kind of looks longer in some of the shots I got here, but it's about 80 feet long and it varied in width from you know 14 feet to 20 feet with all the different jogs in it. But the, the real thing we're here to do is just pour three or four inches of concrete and nothing about this part up here where we're at right now was was level at all it was all jagged and you saw it in the beginning they did kind of sprinkle some crushed stone over most of the ledge but there was a couple spots where you could still see the rock so i'm just up there i'm just mag floating it out you know trying to get it somewhat smooth just to make it look kind of decent even though there's really not going to be anybody up here once they deck this over with the wood flooring up where I am right now it'll only be two feet of headroom in there so no one's ever going to get up in there really we're pouring the slump actually pretty dry we don't want this to sag any more than it has to that's just going to make our job a little easier even though it's a little bit tougher to get the concrete uh, raked around it's probably about a four inch slump i'd say and the concrete's really hot this is this is uh you know in december here in maine so it is pretty chilly even though it looks nice and sunny out and pretty warm it's in the 20s here this morning so it's still pretty chilly out we didn't have to put accelerator in this today because it is going to get up into the 40s so this will cure good enough to put the some curing blankets on later in the day because tonight it, the temps are falling back down below freezing so we're going to want to have to protect this that blue stuff that blue poly you see is actually a 15 mil poly it's, it's an actual vapor barrier so it's pretty thick plastic we had some of that left over from different jobs around the, at the house so we just thought we'd bring that and use it up get rid of it and it worked out really good for this job so the three of us you know we'll get down we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves we'll pour out you know enough concrete and then the three of us will jump right back and get it mag floated we can't really screed any of this it's just too out of level so the simplest way we found to do it is just kind of mag float it as you go mag your footprints out and just keep working your way downhill basically um, until we get to that other spot that somewhat level we did need the conveyor truck here we we decided it was a little too sandy over here on the right to try to back a truck around that side. We didn't want to take a chance on getting it stuck. The gravel over there was had a lot of sand with it, and concrete trucks just don't go well in sand. Their traction is horrible. Plus, it was a little soft, too, so we didn't want to take a chance on getting something stuck. So I did have them send the conveyor truck first just in case we, we couldn't get over there, and it, that just happened to be the case. That conveyor on that truck reaches about 40 feet, so that made the pour a little bit easier than just trying to just trying to shoot it from the other side or pump it. You know, it saved about $750 from having to pump it just using the conveyor truck. You can 
you kind of see right there just how how stiff that stuff is we're pouring. And Darren's, you know, kicking stuff up into his feet to fill his footprints in as you go. That's probably the slowest part of this is just as you're magging your way down, you know, you got to fill in your foot tracks. And then, you know, you still want to look somewhat consistent. It doesn't really have to be perfectly smooth or definitely not, not anywhere near level, but just smoothing it off. That way, you know, during the building process, if this isn't, isn't going to be watertight for quite a while, you know, any water that does get down in here will run down into this lower part. And they have a, they did have a four inch pipe down there that they're going to end up sticking some type of drain on eventually. Now Luke's just trying to bull float part of that where it's a little bit more, what do you want to say, um, flatter or leveler across the middle just to see if that was a little quicker than mag. <laughs> and it didn't really turn out to be much quicker so he's going up in there and just using a derby to take out whatever he couldn't get. Alright, first truck's dunk. He's washing out, second truck's mixing up. Say we went about two-thirds of the way on that slope part so we're gonna have plenty of concrete all we're doing is shaping this we just gotta we just gotta seal the sub base off so there's no moisture that comes up through when they deck this over you know they'll deck it they'll deck it from here over so there's not gonna be any really any headroom up there no usable space so this part right here will be the only part where there's a little bit of usable space so we're just gonna That'll be fairly flat right there. We'll just bull float it and it'll be all good. But that's basically how we're doing it. We're just shaping it by hand over that stuff, getting it somewhat smooth, then that'll be done. Way. I was 
I got all out thrown. I ain't gonna hurt. Okay. Nice spot, day, night. Keep you in mind? Black Friday? What about last Friday? I saw you about one o'clock in the floor of the rain and it's too custom. Yeah. All right, gonna be jumping out that little area, so let's go reposition, get this thing finished up. Coming out pretty good with uh, the rocky coast here in Maine. On the coastline, there's a lot of ledge. So there's a lot of basements that are like this. Some have more headroom than others, but this one. How would you feel? This one's only got one little spot where it's got headroom. Why would that be different? Okay, you win. Watch out. Well, that's it, got it all finished up, had plenty of concrete. This this end down here ended up being a little flatter 
So it'd be a little bit usable space. They'll probably have a little bulkhead door there. Probably utility room. Up here is just nothing. No, no one's gonna go up in here. So just need to seal that off, but we got it done. Had plenty of Crete. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.